You're watching New Car Spin, and this is the GMC Yukon Denali Duramax, which means it's a diesel. It actually shouldn't be on my channel, New Car Spin. It should be on my other channel, Diesel Drives. But let's look at this real quick because I'm conflicted. Uh, number one, I like the way it looks because this updated look definitely makes the older one look older. And for all the Jennifers in the world, uh, this is probably devastating for them because now they have to step up and find more money to find the way to get a new one like this. Um, the other thing about it is it still kind of looks the same as the old one from the back, to me at least. I don't really see much of a difference, but I mean, what else can you do with something this size? And that's kind of the problem I have. It's, it's big, but it's not big enough and I'll tell you that because I went out with some friends the other day we all went out for uh, dinner and you can't really get four six-foot guys back here uh, or in in the front and in the back because these seats just don't provide enough room they there's more room actually in the third row than there is in the second row which is weird and we've all tried to kind of like move these seats we can't figure it out so, getting in here, sitting down behind my own driving position, and that's how much room I have. And then I just have to stare at this big screen, which, I don't know, it looks good, but it's not an iPad. They, they should probably just give you an iPad these days, because the only thing this can do is control the ability to send navigation to the front, and, you know, if you want your kids or your backseat passengers to learn about geography or stop asking you if you're there yet they could do the same thing on google maps i mean through a regular app rather than having to use the car system and then as well you can lock out from the front these screens back here but i mean there's not much to it here now you can slide this thing uh, the center console backwards and it comes to about here which then reduces more of the back space I don't understand the whole point of that. Uh, we'll get to that when we move up front. There is a nice panoramic roof, but overall, aha, uh -huh, there is a way to slide the seats back, as I thought. Okay, so that's the seat in the uncomfortable position, and this is the seat all the way back. Not much of a difference, actually. Let's get back in. That's kind of the issue I have here. A little bit more room just a little bit it's not as roomy inside as it looks on the outside and then we have to talk about this interior I know it's a light color and some people hate that I mean it's really just given to uh, journalists so that you can see things on camera it is a good-looking interior the wood looks pretty fake though uh, but your your uh, wife Jennifer won't really mind that she's all about style all right so cross-stitching, bow stereo, power sideboards. Third row is pretty big. Let's open the trunk here. <clears throat> nope, it doesn't pass the real estate agent test. That obviously is you put a bottle of wine here and if you open the trunk, the bottle of wine shouldn't be able to roll out. And as you can tell, there's not much of a lip here. So every time your real estate agent opens the trunk, bottle of wine comes crashing out every time every time so we have the ability to control the seats from here electronically and this thing does have air suspension but you can't raise or lower from back here like you can in most European vehicles that have that same setup and if we lower the third row which is this one let's see okay Mm, that's why that seat's not all the way back because now you have to slide it forward so basically if you had a child seat in there and you wanted more space and you slid the seat back you then you couldn't lower this one all the way let's see if we can fix that okay that's all the way forward let's try this again 
Okay, so there's their room. And then the, uh, the other issue I have is, let's rise it up. Put these up. The power trunk button, so you have nothing here for it like you would on like the Durango or the Jeep or the, you think even the Chrysler Pacifica, you have it up here. Oh, well, look at that. What is that? That's very cheap window defroster set up. I haven't seen that since the 80s. So, as you can tell, it's a very big vehicle, but when it comes to the interior, it's not as big as you'd think. And that's the biggest problem I have with this. It looks newer than the old one, so people have to freak out if they're really vain and uh, narcissistic. But then you look at this one and you go, what did they really do other than change the design? Well, the biggest difference is right there. And this is what you'll be seeing more of, I guess, in some GM products, which is ironic. Because back in the day when Volkswagen brought their diesels out, they said those American v those American diesels were terrible. And then Volkswagen gets nailed and now all of a sudden GM comes out with diesels. I don't understand. I really don't. So when you start the vehicle, you know, you just have like a screen here and a screen in there. These are analog gauges on the sides. It's not as nice as the Escalade would be, but I think that's their point. They'd say, you know, just spend the extra 20 grand and get the Escalade. I really don't know how much this costs. I'm gonna guess it's like 76, although it's not all wheel drive or four wheel drive, it, but it can tow. So I have a weird mode selector here where I can put this vehicle in sport mode. I don't think I've ever seen a diesel with sport mode that doesn't need it. And we have all of our safety systems here. We have auto stop start. This is an interesting one. I don't know if that is the uh, block heater or if that is the power outlet somewhere, which I can't even see. I don't even know where the outlet is, so I don't know what that's about. And no, I did not read the manual. My test about vehicles is I should be able to get in and understand everything without having to consult the manual. Uh, the air suspension, there's a little button right there. You have to push that. And then you can only go into normal ride height or... Sorry, hold on a second. It canceled out on me. Normal ride height or entry exit. So I'll just keep it in normal. And yeah, that's it. I mean, there's really nothing to it. Let me show you this. Nice little storage space here. This is a different style cup holder. This is a waste of space in my mind because it's a huge panel that blocks two USB ports. One standard 12 volt socket. And then it's really deep and then you can put your phone down in there. But I don't know why that needed to be so deep and why I needed this kind of a panel. But, uh, which doesn't sound like wood to me. It doesn't, I don't know. Anyway, this is the weirdest part here because I feel like D should be for dock. And over here, uh, this trailer brake controller should probably be bow thrusters because this thing is massive. And parking it for me has been difficult. So I don't know how Jennifer's going to do it. But you have to pull for reverse, push for neutral, and pull for drive. So when you go between reverse and drive, it's the same action. And that may make sense to some people, but to me, I'd rather have pull for reverse and push for drive so that I know I'm not accidentally pulling one or the other, right? Because if you're turning your head and you're in reverse and, and you want to go into drive, you got to pull drive again, or maybe you're not paying attention. You want to pull drive, but you pull reverse. It's the same action, and I've never seen that before. Now, what else do we have? Oh, yeah, fuel economy. So let's go down there. Uh, I haven't been very nice to this vehicle because I've been driving it only in the city, but even today with a heavy foot, 22.3 mile per gallon average, someone drove this before us and got 34.6 miles per gallon. So that's pretty impressive. Actually, that would be the only purpose of getting this vehicle is to get it because you can get it in a diesel. And if you don't get it in the diesel, you're an idiot. And that's because, yes, it has a 10-speed automatic, and yes, the V8 has more power, the gas version, but you don't really need it in a vehicle this size. Why do you need to go faster? Uh, to me, that makes no sense. And that's why this is a perfect car for Jennifer, because 
Jennifer doesn't need everything in the world. All the Jennifers in the world need is heated seats, cooled seats, air conditioning, a way to control everybody in the back, because you got to have control over everyone in the back. And then, you know, a decent sound system and some buttons to push. And that'll keep your Jennifer happy all day long. Until, of course, a new one comes out. Now, the one thing I do dislike about this vehicle, because only I could think about is road tripping. I didn't actually go on a road trip in this vehicle because I really don't care for the ride. We have cross traffic alert, the seat vibrates and you get a little alert there and it shows you which direction they're coming from. Let's go ahead and disembark. See, I wish I could push for drive, but it's the same action. It's so weird. They do have some cool technology on here for the cameras. See if I can get to the camera. Where is it? I just saw it. No. Uh, home. Camera. <clears throat> That's funny too, right? It looks like a still camera, but it should be a video camera. I don't know why they did that. A little bit of an iconography f up. Doesn't surprise me though for a large corporation to have one person make that decision and ten people committee with that. Yeah, that's not the kind of camera we want. We're not taking pictures. We're taking video. That should be a video camera. But from this camera, you can change all of your view angles, and there's quite a lot of stuff to look at. You have your perspectives on here, so you can see if you're going to hit that curb. And then uh, side view, which is really good, so you can see if you're going to touch the curb. And then we've got our little zoom in. So really cool stuff on this vehicle that kind of helps it for off-roading. I'm just waiting for all this traffic to go. Do, 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 do. And then the only thing I can think about, oh, this is more traffic. This is what I get for doing a review at one o'clock on a Tuesday. <sighs> no, nope, not really going to go for it. I'm going to go for it now. That's good. So the thing is, you have to get the accelerator pedal in just the right spot to get decent acceleration out of it. If you just kind of like bury your foot, you don't get a launch or any sort of thrust off the line with this 10-speed auto. If you feather it in and just kind of keep feathering it, you kind of confuse the 10-speed auto. If you just drive it without thinking, which Jennifer's good at, you just drive and don't think and you just go for it, things would be really good for your, your Jennifer. And uh, that's the best way to do it. But the ride quality is interesting because with the air suspension, I can't change the, the height. I can't make it higher than normal. I can't make it softer than normal, but I can only do that if I change the drive mode. So going in here and going into tow or haul or normal allows the suspension to adjust. And then you get a different ride aspect, but out of all of them, normal should be comfort and sport should just be sport. But I don't really feel that difference. Also, these air vents look really small, but there's a lot of air coming out of them. And that's a good thing. All right, so just like Jennifer not thinking, blah, blah, blah. Let the car do the work. It accelerates just fine. It's pretty smooth. And as you can tell, fairly quiet. Now, I don't know if I would drive this thing with rear wheel drive. It would have to be four-wheel drive and I've never seen anyone tow with these things even here in Texas I've never seen a Yukon or Suburban uh, tow so I didn't really want to do that kind of a test but in reality you know we just look at our fuel economy and we just cruise along and we go down the street and, and things are pretty good the only the only issue is this ride quality because in convertibles you get this thing called cowl shake because convertibles don't really have much structural integrity when everything's basically laid out like a sleigh. And here we have a lead sled called the Yukon, which I always thought was a pretty badass truck. And getting behind the wheel of this thing, and it might be these wheels, it might be this air suspension, there might be like a perfect combination for configuring one of these. 
but it certainly isn't this. And it just rocks and it, and it crashes into bumps and it just transmits everything and magnifies every bump into the cabin. And I thought this would be really smooth and really svelte and you know it wouldn't knock over Jennifer's latte. However, you're gonna see a lot of spilt milk in this truck. And that's kind of where I'm gonna leave it. It is expensive. It is very large. It is fuel efficient. It can look good in the right color combination, but it doesn't have massage seats. It doesn't really have a great stereo. And this is really confusing if you're not paying attention. And I'm just worried about your Jennifer because I don't think Jennifer's all there either. So there you go. Not all there for people who aren't. Thanks for watching.